Hi all. So here we have Himadri. So I have known him since 2016. So he got AR15 in uh, Gate 2017 and then he joined IIT Bombay. So I'll let him introduce himself. Okay. Uh, so hello everyone. I am Himadri. I am basically from uh, Siliguri but now currently I stay in Kolkata. I have completed my bachelor's in EC from IEM Kolkata and I have completed my master's in CSE from IIT Bombay. Uh, currently, I completed my uh, M.Tech in 2019 and I am about to join Samsung Research as a research engineer. Uh, the purpose of uh, meeting with Ravisa here is to answer questions that uh, many people have, like common questions relating to gate exams, common questions relating to uh, life at IITB and the never-ending uh, debate about IITB versus IIC. So, uh, I hope that uh, most of your questions will be answered by the end of this interview. and. Let's see. I hope this interview will be helpful. Thank you. Yeah. So the main intention of doing the video is to inspire you people, uh, those who are preparing for GATE. So once you look at Himadri and uh, if you have seen what he has achieved, you'll you'll probably be motivated. Okay. So that is the main intention. And also I, I read some comments saying that uh, why do you think only IATNs are uh, you know are successful and uh, why do you always promote the, them as successful people? See, my intention is not to say that only IITNs are successful in life, but as you are all preparing to become an IITN, it is all just to inspire you, okay? So, there are people who are successful who are not from IITs, but here my my intention is to just motivate the only the uh, class of people who are preparing for GATE in order to get into an IIT, okay? So, let's start it. So, we have all the questions here. I'll ask the questions and uh, Himadri will give you the answers. So I'm going to pick some of the questions that you have asked on the poster. So the first question is, so your rank is uh, AR15. Yeah. It was AR15 in Gate 2016, S right? 17. 17 yeah. yeah. Uh, so my question or even many people, most people are asking is, why did you choose IIT Bombay? Uh, you could have easily got into this uh, IASC as well, right? And also, when I had spoken to your parents mm -hmm. last time, in 2017, I remember them, they, are, they were asking me for my suggestion, whether you should be going for IIT Bombay or IIC. Mm -hmm. And generally, my suggestion for anyone, you know, who, who, whoever asked me, is I generally tell them to join IIC. Mm -hmm. Because that is a place where you could see research closely. That is, and uh, if you look at learning technologies, you could do it uh, anywhere. That that was my perspective. See, uh, for me, if you ask me, I, since I am from IIC, I am always inclined towards IIC, and I know more about IIC compared to IIT Bombay. Right. So I am not the right one to say IIT Bombay is not good. Or uh, yeah. uh, what I could say is my experience at IIC was good, and that is what I could say. Now you tell me. What has actually uh, this you know driven you towards IIT Bombay? Bombay right. So uh, like I would like to begin this answer by saying that uh, comparing them is like a, like there will be no perfect solution in comparing them. Like IIT B versus IS is a never-ending debate, and uh, professors and research works are very comparable in both of the institutes. Uh, but what uh, what especially drove me towards IIT B is like. Uh, uh, other than uh, like, like compared to IISC, like IITB has many like sports events going throughout the year and then cultural events going throughout the year. So when I talked to senior, uh, they kind of had the feel like uh, education. So people is generally say that life at IIT Bombay is, is a bit of bit chill, easier yeah, compared bit easier to because you have many kind of events. Is happening. really true? <laughs> Did you find it that way? It, it, it depends. Actually for me, I mean I went with the intention to do a lot of things but I couldn't. <laughs> right. uh, but many people did. So you wanted to join a music band and... Uh, I wanted to do like at least have a play sports and stuff like that. So were you able to do it? On a few occasions, not, not regularly, but there were many people who pursued sports, who pursued okay. culturals. So there are a lot of uh, sports clubs and all. Yeah, there are a lot of sports clubs, clubs and all. There are a lot of cultural events. I mean, you have heard about, you all must have heard about Mode Indigo, the biggest cultural fest happening. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, education-wise, if you compare, the faculties are no doubt best in both of the institutes. In India, they are the best you can get. But uh, I think, I I mean, I personally uh, preferred IITB because of this region. Okay. Uh, see, for those who are in a dilemma about which institute to choose, my suggestion is, either you are going for MS or MTech, my suggestion is, 
you decide about the area in which you want to work like if you if you want to work in machine learning you you just decide about that area first either computer networks or either systems or theory or machine learning you decide the area first and then you try to find out who are the uh, prominent professors in that area and you just see where they are and you just see their work right so if you see uh, there are some professors who are really good but they are they are in you know small institutes compared to other institutes so instead of going only by the uh, brand you can also go by choosing your area and then choosing a professor and probably you can go and interact with him through emails or directly personally meet him find out about what he is working in 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 his lab and and that is one way you can decide which institute to join right so either you can, that will actually be helpful if you are deciding about iits or iisc okay. and and on top of that like i would like to add like talk to seniors Huh. I mean that is always helpful. Like ask the same sort of questions to a person. See, a person from IIT B won't be able to give you an, a perspective from IISC. Yeah. So, so that I mean you can ask the same set of questions to both the peoples. So you can't ask and me about IIT Bombay or you can't I, ask him about IISC. Yeah, right? because uh, it will be unfair for me to answer about IISC. Yeah. And and coming to placements, where uh, you know there uh, more or less the placements are same in both the uh, institutions. institutions so, yeah. Placements uh, are same in both. The uh, same companies visit the institutions, and uh, I think packages are also the, almost the same. So there is no much difference, right? And uh, the next question is, okay, so you you did your BTech from EC, EC, right? Yeah. And then uh, I did your masters from computer science. Computer science. Now, why did you do that? I mean, uh, f even after being a EC guy, like I used to uh, do heavy competitive programming from third year. Okay. So that was kind of inclined me towards, though I didn't know about any subjects of uh, computer science, but I had a fair idea about like data structures and algorithms. Okay. So that is the thing like I wanted to pursue. I mean, I had an inclination about data science and algo data structures and algorithms, not data science. And uh, like after that, what happened is in EC, uh, it takes a lot of struggle to for you to be good in the sense like if you want to do something on your own you need to have an all time li lab access whereas resources in CEC are much easily available like you can log into online you can see lectures you can basically a computer and some computation power is all that you need for doing CEC so that kind of like it's a gradual shift in my intentions like uh, pushed me towards CEC Okay, so what he's trying to do is uh, say is, if you want to learn something in computer science, you have a lot of online resources available, and if you want to do the same in ECE, the resources available are very less, and also the labs are uh, easier in in the sense if you have a computer, it is a lab for you, right? But in ECE, it is not that way. So he felt that learning learning stuff in computer science is easier compared easier, to ECE. Yeah. And apart from that, yeah, I had a m much more inclination towards algorithms and data structures. Ah, like so. and, and he he knew about this and so that, so that has driven him. And the second thing is, uh, so if you are going to do your master's in IITs or IIC, do you really feel that coding is uh, very important? A coding, see, as a computer science engineer, you are expected to know a bit of coding. But it's not that you should be able to code heavily. So okay. that is not required. I mean, that level of coding you should know where you should able to code up your logic. I mean, you shouldn't be, uh, you shouldn't be like you don't know a anything. A language even it's not re it's not even required that you know a lot of frameworks, a lot of languages. No, even knowing to write a simple program in C plus plus is decent enough for a start. But as time passes, the coursework will gradually make you learn coding. Okay. So that will happen. I mean, there are many people. There are many pro people out there who doesn't even know proper coding. I mean, I mean, there are people in research, not people in jobs, and they are perfectly good in theoretical computer science, right? So, uh, so coding is not a requirement. But if you be an engineer one day, you need to know, and that that you will pick up eventually when you do the course works and do the stuffs. Yeah, so what you mean to say is, if you are good with basic programming, like if you are comfortable in C programming languages, and if you are written, if you are writing 50 lines of code or 100 lines of code, that is good enough. 
and once you get into an IIT or any institute, there the courses, they will have the assignments and uh, project works designed in such a way that you will be able to write thousands of lines of code and that is where you can learn about coding. So don't worry about coding at this point in time, you will eventually learn it once you get into IIT. I mean it's a, it's a skill you acquire with time. So. And also he's saying that if you are going to have a, uh, a job in a researcher profile, coding is not that important. But I mean, if you are in going theoretical to, computer science uh, at least. Theoretical mm -hmm. computer science. And if you are going to be a software engineer, yes, coding is important. But anyway, you can learn all of these when you are at MTech. So anyway, that is the main intention of doing masters, right? So you are going to learn technologies and you are learn, going to learn yeah. coding. And so in overall, not knowing coding is not a big issue for okay. masters. So even if you don't know anything about coding and if you just know basics of it, that's enough for now. And whatever syllabus we have in GATE, they are going to cover the basics of algorithm, data structures and the coding part. So don't worry about it. You will be perfectly fine. Okay. Fine. And now the most important thing that any GATE um, student preparing for GATE should do is, uh, one is they should be taking test series and second thing is they should be doing revision because it is not just what you read that is important, it is what you remember at the end that is what is important. So revision is going to help it. So please uh, tell the students about how you took, your the, you took the test series and how you revised while you were preparing. Yeah, so uh, it's very important to realize that in GATE you have 10 subjects. Mm -hmm. So remembering them is a very important as well as very difficult task at the same time. So there is a popular misconception among the students that uh, you complete all the subjects and then start the test series. As a matter of fact, you complete all the subjects and then start your revision. So that uh, while uh, that can work for uh, few, but I don't think so that can work for many. Uh, so what I did was basically you need to learn on the go and revise on the go. Like let's say uh, you take up two subjects, you read them, you complete them. By the time you ha you are done with three subjects or so, you should pick up test, uh, test series. Like uh, you will see the test series are organized. Like first there is a topic wise test from each subject. So first give them. Like you can give them while re while completing the subject, while completing the topic or if that doesn't suit you. Let's say after completing the topic one month later, you can give them. So what in that manner, what will help is one thing is you will revise and another thing is you will know how much are you able to remember. So and the, the frequency of revision should increase as the day of the, of the exam approaches and in a, and as such the your revision should be so you should be so fluent with your revision that you should be able to revise an entire subject in a matter of three or four hours. And your, I mean, this the taking the test series and revising is a process that should help each other. You should revise because you are not able to perform good in test series, and you should give your test series because you have just revised. So that is the two important things. Do not wait to complete all the subjects. Uh, let's say wait, uh, for, wait at least till you have completed three subjects, and then uh, revise them in a round robin fashion. Have uh, let's say an hour. Every day for your revision, let's say today you revise DS, tomorrow you revise Algo and per topic wise and do that. And also what I did was sometimes I used to surprise myself. Uh, let's say uh, I have read a subject that has been one month long, uh, one month back, uh, any subject for, as a matter of fact. So I would randomly pick up a uh, topic test from it and just give my exam on that. So what that can help you is that can keep your exam ready and that will help you to assess yourself. Basically, the overall one-liner is do not wait for wait completing all the subjects. The end. Yeah, revise them in a continuous fashion. Okay. And same with the test series. So what he's saying is, so go according to the uh, schedule that we have put up in the website. Just see, we have organized it in terms of the topics. Okay. So take the topic by steps as and when you finish your finish completing your topic, and then. Revise as frequently as possible. So especially about revision, I have uploaded a video. You can read about that. Sorry, you can watch that video. So you can just Google out how to revise and uh, remember things for longer. Or I'll repost that video again. Okay. So you please watch that. So that is the most important thing you should be doing. Okay. So actually, Himadri has prepared um, after doing his B Tech. So after completing his B Tech in ECE, then he has taken a year gap. 
and in that year he has prepared for gate computer science okay so let me ask him how many hours he has prepared for gate okay uh, see in the initial days uh, you must not stress too much yourself stress yourself too much uh, in the sense that you should watch uh, videos uh, you should watch videos you should make notes of them but you should at the back of your mind it shouldn't continuously bang you like i need to do this i need to do this otherwise what happens is in the long run it won't help so let's say what I did was I have put like approximately five hours uh, in the starting one month. Like I started in the last week of July or first week of August that time. So I tried to consistently put out four or five hours. Now it doesn't mean that every day you have to study five hours. Sometimes you can take a break because that is also important. But as time goes by, you will find that there is something driving you. Like your progress should drive you. And I was able to put like seven hours from month of September seven hours consistently yeah, on average from month of September and then in the last one month I had to put like more than 10 hours since there was a lot of revision to be done, lot of tests to be covered and lot of things to be read. So approximately I think uh, for a guy who just starts from scratch in the month of August you need to give, you need to manage at least six or seven hours and for people who are doing jobs and four hours will be decent if you are from CS background. And on weekends they can put it. And on weekends, yeah, you have to put because I mean. So see, uh, I have spoken to many people uh, who who are in you know top hundred. I have never heard about anyone logging in more than ten hours a day. So that is impossible, right? So most of the people they have they have done four hours consistently. So generally, people all, almost all the toppers they have started from August. That is the month generally they start. And from September, they will be serious about it. Even he started his preparation yeah, from, from August. August. But being an EC student, starting it from August and getting it into top 100 is, I don't know, it is you know, it is really great thing. But what people can do is, consistently, you try to put at least three to four hours a day. That will be enough. And whenever you get time like weekends, you can increase your time. But don't don't be in the mindset that if you are not putting in more hours you are losing out on something you will con continuously get uh, demotivated and uh, demoralized if your aim is to log in 10 hours every day what happens is uh, if you fail to achieve it you will just uh, de get demoralized so that should not be your aim your aim should be to consistently put at least three hours three to four hours every day and in the weekends you try to put in more hours that's it Anyway, as you reach the last one month, like August uh, and uh, you know February, sorry, like January and uh, December, you can you will automatically increase the number of hours because you will be doing a lot of revision and you will be taking a lot of test series. So that is how your time is going to get uh, improvised. So as you go along, you can increase it. But right from the start, you know, first day, don't think that you can put in a lot of hours, okay? That is impossible. Yeah, and also, like, uh, during preparation, what you can do is, like, small set small targets for yourself. Right? I mean, that helps. Like, you don't set, like, I will complete TOC in 10 days. Okay. Because then it may not work. Like, set a day target. Like, by tonight, I'm going to, let's say, complete regular expressions. Okay. Or, let's say, drawing DFAs, like, converting NFS to DFAs. Okay. So that that helps. I mean, setting small target helps, and in the initial days, at least in the later part of the, the later part of your preparation, like you can set up big targets or whatever your preparation. So what you mean to say is uh, split up the entire subject into topics. Yeah. And then try to achieve each topic one each by one. Topic, yeah. Instead of having uh, instead of having like a ten days time, ten days I will complete this time. subject or fifteen days. So he is saying just be uh, very very uh, clear about your goals. So don't have a vague goal like you want to sub finish a subject. Instead, you just have a goal like you want to finish DFA today or NFA tomorrow, like that. Okay. So is it very important to have a timetable when you prepare? Uh, at least in the early stages, I don't think so. Okay. I mean, actually, what happens? The the, the yeah, test actually, what happens is in the early stages, the more you pressurize yourself, the more you will move away. Okay, you'll give up. So yeah, I mean, start a subject which you love. Okay. That is helping, and like for me, it was TOC. Like I watched your videos, so I was like kind of able to relate to it. Though I didn't ever study TOC, it is it was logical and it, it was logical, and I found it like yeah, it's coming intuitively. Okay. So I mean, there may be many other subjects for you. So start with something that you love. Start with something that you are able to relate to. So you mean to say start with the easy subjects? 
easy yeah he is a subject yeah. which you can understand, understand. And, or as a matter of fact anyone can love hard subjects too that is their choice okay but uh, what you need to do is like yeah, easy subjects is obvious choice i, I mean it decreases the burden so, but then again if you pick something you love and you can relate to what happens is you don't feel like you are studying towards for gate okay what you feel is like you are doing something you like and then you won't know like 4 hours have passed so that happened with me while seeing your videos and in many cases i mean that happens so what you mean to say is um, so try to pick up the subject which are easy and finish them before you go to the difficult subjects even if you look at the way we have organized the test series we have kept all the easy subjects at the beginning and we have postponed the difficult subjects to the end right you can sh- uh, see the schedule that we have given for the test series and you can prepare that way okay fine so himadri most important question is is masters really required is just you know bachelor's enough how how we how do you think the masters has helped you are in changing the pers- in, in changing your perspective towards life and how do you think it is going to be helpful in your professional career also yeah so uh, for me and for most of the people like i've talked to like masters have changed them in various d- different ways so for me what it has made is like one thing is education wise so if you go to normal i mean any college is not i mean normal college is a bad thing to say but if you go to any colleges that are are in the top tier ones so the course structure organized is very different like in many of the subjects you will cover in many of the colleges you will cover the subjects let's say computer networks as a cs guy and in also in in btech iit guys also cover computer networks but the course curriculum is very different here uh, not only is the exams are important so every exam will be every course will be guided by an assignment and there you will get hands on experience like of a uh, applying whatever you are learning in the classes so that happens in almost all of the courses in any of the iits or nits or iisc so let's say any topic like machine learning or any topic like system design they will have a lot of coding exposure so that 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 course uh, arrangement is is the thing that is to be very appreciated um secondly uh, placements placements also are very important like in iits you get a lot of uh, exposure to many companies coming and they are trying to uh, get you into their uh, company so what happens is basically the uh, the reason that uh, the btech and mtech shifts you so much is because in mtech you are able to gather a lot of skill set uh, let's say uh, i mean yeah it's a lot of skill sets where you work on many different things like say a btech guy coming from uh, a tier 2 college may not know much of systems design and what is required or or machine learning or deep learning but a mtech guy uh, the same guy when he completes his mtech will have some idea about them and, and maybe he will specialize on his project work so that being said like one thing is the course curriculum and another thing is your placements and the third thing and the very important thing is your research work so most of the masters guy are expected to do research and that is what we are there for so when you work on a problem statement that has many implications let's say my problem statement is about counting people from images there are many people who are working on 5g networks people working on uh, water management issues so when you work on problems like this and when you see that yes your work has some social and research implications you really try, try you really start appreciating yourself so that way you get recognition not only from people around you but also from various companies and your friends and you get to learn a lot at the end of the day and you get to do a lot of things which challenges you like takes you out of the comfort zone so basically yeah that has been my gain after doing mtech i am sure that everyone has their own reasons and gains see what he mean to say is um with btech you will be able to become a software engineer and um, probably it will take some years for you to crawl up to uh, crawl up the ladder to become sd2 but with mtech he will be directly starting off as sd2 role and the other most important thing is uh, you will have a opportunity you will have an opportunity to look at uh, research closely when you are doing your masters so this is the only opportunity you'll have so generally if you are from a normal college if you are not from an iit if in in btech you will not have that opportunity to interact with the uh, great professors and phd students 
and you will not be able to look at research closely in BTech. But if you do your masters in uh, good institutes like IITs, NITs, and triple ITs, and like this, you will be able to look at research closely, and you'll be you'll at at that point you'll know whether you are good good enough to pursue your career in research, or do you want to you know stick back to being a software engineer? See, ultimately, at the end, if you don't achieve anything else, you are going to become a software engineer. That is for sure. But uh, master's is going to give you an opportunity to see whether you are good at research or not, and at least to know the meaning of research and what is happening in your area at present. If you want to know all these things, then master's is definitely going to be helpful. Right? Yeah, and there are many like good software engineers that have come out from our batch also like they have been placed in very good companies throughout india and outside also and like uh, the skill sets that you acquire are very trusted skill sets the grades that you have are very trusted grades the work that you do are very trusted work so that helps not only in, i mean it's a thing that you can have for lifetime right i mean yeah, you, once you, you have that brand, yeah, you, you know your resume is going to start like yeah, yeah, and, from IIT, IIT Bombay. Bombay and, so wherever you go, whichever job you apply, you know they are just going to see that uh, first line, and you are almost fifty percent placed just with that line, and the remaining work is yeah, just uh, remaining work and, and I mean, I mean the tag plays an important role from any college, and like you will have that sufficient skill to crack the interviews or wherever you let's say you apply for PhDs or something and. The most important thing is I've, I found that it, it's a very, uh, what do I say, I mean I'm, I was honored to meet so great professors, yet they were so humble, I mean even my batchmates they were so good and yet they are so humble and it's an environment where everybody is ready to learn, I mean it doesn't matter if he's a student, ready to, to share, share and teacher, yeah. ready to share, ready to learn, ready to hear your ideas, so I mean everyone should have that experience once. Yeah. So how was your coursework at um, IIT Bombay? Was it like a fixed curriculum or um, you have the flexibility to choose and uh, pick the subjects? So uh, or do you have any fixed things? Uh, so the courses at IIT Bombay is divided like you have to take nine department electives and one institute elective and uh, apart from that for your research work you have your seminar okay. and MTP phase one and phase two. Okay. And in first uh, semester, you need to do software lab. So most of the courses in uh, as uh, department electives you can choose, but uh, from a pool of from a pool of like there are many subjects like let's say. So you will have at least uh, fifteen twenty subjects. Yeah, from a pool of fifteen twenty subjects, you can uh, you can do uh, nine subjects. You have to do nine. You subjects. have to do nine. You can do more than nine subjects, but at the least nine requirement subjects. is ten. Total. Requirement is ten, and one is your institute elective. Okay, so like courses from other departments. So t totally, you are supposed to do ten subjects in two years. In two years, yeah. Okay, and, and you can seminar. choose them from uh, all the available all the pool, courses. But, uh, most of the courses you are free to choose. Are there any any compulsory courses that you should? Uh, there do aren't. No, there aren't any compulsory courses. But what happens is, if you are to choose an advanced machine learning course, you are going to take the there is a segment. soft or a hard pre. Okay, so once you if you have to do the advanced courses, you should have done the, have basic, done the course, basic courses. Basic yeah. There courses. is a hard prerequisite in few of the courses. Ah, okay, so and um, how difficult was it to finish a course there? So how are the uh, exams and how are the gra grading? So, uh, the one thing I appreciate about uh, IIT Bombay is like the teachers take a lot of time to prepare the questions. So most of the questions. You mean to like say the exam, the exam questions, okay. quizzes. And how how were the assignments before that? The assignments were. I mean, most of the courses has like it depends on the structure, but uh, they were like moderate to difficult kind of assignments. They all yeah. all are actually coding assignments. Yeah. So it's kind of divided in like uh, like you have uh, two assignments, one projects. So every course has two assignments and one project. One project. Yeah, most of the courses have that. How many courses do you do in one semester? I mean the, if you see like average it out like per, a first year guy like in, in first year a student takes like seven subjects okay. and in the next year you take three So subjects. you mean to say three subjects in the first semester, four, four subjects, in the first, four in the first semester, yeah, three, three in, in the, the next second semester and, and probably one or two in the next and then one, and then one or two in the yeah, last yeah, that's right. Because semester. in third sem you have your placements. Okay. And also there is like phase one of your master's thesis. Okay. But it is all up to you. So by it's the end of by the end of two years, you are supposed to complete 
10 courses, 10 courses and people generally do 7 to 8 courses in the, in the first, year, first yeah. year and 2 courses they do 2 to 3 in the second year and then they mainly focus on the project in the second year first. and every course is going to have 2 assignments and a project. most of the courses have that most of the courses assignments. and the, many may have only one project okay. I mean in that case the project will be much heavier project so is generally heavier compared to generally heavier compared to the assignments, assignments. Yeah. Okay. And, and all these are actually uh, designed in such a way that you will become a good programmer. Yeah, and also, I mean, it will uh, like uh, help you learn, provoke you to think. Okay. So, so how do you I apply mean, the theory part? Yeah, I mean, most of the, the one beautiful thing is most of the subjects have like open book exams. Oh, you have like open book exams. Yeah, you are allowed to carry your so book. So those who don't have your open notes. book exams. You can actually take any book to the exam hall and you can open the book and you can read while answering the questions. That is an open book exam and he is saying that most of the most exams, of the exams, are, most of the exams are open book. So it, it, it just says that you are not going to find any answers in the book and you have to think and uh, you know invent the answers and the yeah, questions are going to be creative that is there the was one subject also that my friend took and huh. that in that you are allowed to take the uh, question paper to your home okay so that is open time exam open time open resource open net so the open time and open book exam is like you they'll give you the question paper you can take it home and you can submit the answers maybe one week later or so they will give you generally a deadline about they'll give you a few days to work on it you can submit the answers by then so it means that you are not going to uh, find, find it any find it anywhere online are in the books and you are supposed to think about them invent the answers that is what the meaning of it so the questions are going to be very creative so the standards the quality of standards of the questions are very high very high so at every point it will test you i mean so getting good grades is really difficult it's, it's, it's difficult i mean it's not difficult but you have to i mean if you get a good grade that means you have worked hard you have worked for hard the subject yeah, yeah. okay it's a directly proportional. So it is not, you mean to say it is not uh, as easy as you think it is. Yeah. But we could survive if you want. Yeah, yeah, anyone can survive. I mean, you have to put the hours, I mean. Okay. Yeah, to so generally in BTEC days, people just uh, work one day before the exam. So that is not going to work out. So that you cannot do because ultimately you have to do the assignments. Okay. So assignments and uh, projects that will keep you yeah, working. Yeah, keep this. you working. I mean, even if you don't study, you will be working for that subject. Assignments. So you need to know the concepts in one way or the other to do the assignments uh, so it is main thing is it is like you are set on fire and you are definitely going to work so they'll make sure that you are going to work because of the assignments and projects and obviously you can't copy them no you can't copy them so, because every every toss thing goes through a black check yeah so and there is no way you are going to copy I mean, them so you are supposed to work you're definitely you'll you'll be made to work i mean yeah, the plagiarism thing is taken very strictly. And that is why you are not able to participate in all the uh, no, 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 sports no, that's, events. That's not the reason. <laughs> that's not the reason. I mean, I mean, that's a different story altogether. But uh, here, I mean, many people, even after doing this, even after doing more work than this, do participate. I've seen. So it's. Okay. So the next important thing is uh, so as you are a Bengali. So you are from West Bengal. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so how is the food in IIT Bombay? Did you find uh, the food to be good? Actually, in IASC uh, we have uh, one mess dedicated for Bengalis. Uh, okay. So where you get Bengali food? So do you have any such? Did you miss food there? Yeah, I mean food is a thing that we Bengalis badly miss in any part of the world. So in IIT Bombay we didn't have a dedicated mess but uh, we have a mess like which produces more or less like uh, North Indian food and the morning uh, breakfast used to be South Indian so that kind of thing and I mean it was very good in the North Indian style there were South Indian foods but there were no provisions for Bengali food except we had fish for a day and extra non-veg meals were served but the food is uh, it would be wrong to say that it's not good it is good it's very hygienic but then again Taste is a thing that differs from people to people. So, I mean, that is something you have to compromise with a bit, not much. I mean, I mean, you can order food and eat, but the food is very good. And there are many lot of options like you have uh, in particularly in our mess. We had boiled foods for people who are going to gym and for we had three or four items made every day. We had salads, uh, we had a drink and curds served every day. So, I mean, it's good food. It's definitely very healthy food but not the tastiest one. Okay. So what are the extracurricular activities that you have at IIT Bombay? 
So IIT Bombay provides a host of extracurricular activities. Uh, like let's say uh, you can see the images of the badminton courts. Okay. You can see the images of volleyball courts, basketball courts, and there is a big field which will make you feel like it's a state level facility happening. You have hockey grounds, you have courts for lawn tennis, for squash, okay. and also this is the sports side. So you have uh, it also hosts a lot of cultural activities like Mod Indigo Fest is the biggest fest happening in Asia, biggest cultural fest in a college happening in India, and also there are many events that happens throughout the year, like you have performing arts festival, you have people coming like stand up comedians coming you have this e cell e week happening where you can participate in events so if you want to i mean nothing is stopping you from uh, doing that also there are many facilities provided like each hostel has an attached uh, gym to it there are table tennis ba- table tennis boards kept there and they have a mini ground where either it's a football ground or a basketball ground so that so you can so each hostel to- has an attached gym yeah each hostel has an attached gym to it oh great so i mean and also a tv room and library so you have a tv room and you have yeah. a library in the tv room you get all the newspapers and magazines yeah, and there is a tv where you can okay and uh, generally for football matches and cricket yeah, matches yeah you can go and watch there it will be packed up yeah it is generally packed up i mean and people will be shouting and <laughs> yeah enjoying their way there yeah. and and how many joints food joints you have inside on this uh, most uh, all hostels have one food joint i mean okay. all hostels have canteens which is generally open till 3 so every a. hostel has its own uh, canteen its own there. canteen yeah and uh, apart from that you have uh, two to three like and mostly they are south indian no they are not south indian i mean they have a lot of food options available from south indian they have to a north mix indian. of everything yeah 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 okay. you can get idli dosas upmas to butter chicken out there I mean, so basically you're saying there is everything available in the canteens, in, yeah. inside the campus yeah there is everything other, other than a bar campus. yeah other than a <laughs> pub or a bar again okay. so you don't booze right uh, <laughs> <laughs> your parents are watching okay so yeah. <laughs> let's leave it there i heard that iit bombay has a few good places to hang out like i, I heard that you have a nice pond or a river inside the, i don't know what a, a water body inside the campus itself i generally see the pictures uh, yeah from so it's not exactly inside the campus but what is like it uh, like it's it's it shares the boundary with the campus yeah. and it shares the boundary with our hostel too yeah. so it's very scenic it's powai lake okay, it's, it's a lake. very huge lake in in there so what happens is there is a road where you can go to the boat house so you can sit there in the evening and the the so you can walk from your campus campus yeah you can walk from the campus do you use bicycles inside the campus yeah, yeah yeah people use bicycle inside the campus in fact we have a lot of uh, people hosting like bicycle competitions like racing are, competitions are motorbikes campus. allowed inside the campus motorbikes no students are not allowed to have motorbikes okay students are not allowed no. to have any motorbikes no. there so are only side bicycles only are allowed cycles, yeah okay and uh, there and also you have like on one side of the campus i mean you know that IIT Bombay is surrounded by uh, like uh, it's not surrounded it shares a boundary with Sanjay Gandhi International National Park too okay so the national so, park is just uh, just beside. Sort of beside the IIT Bombay campus and there you have a small hill top mm-hmm. uh, which uh, which is named as Samir hill so i mean you can go in the morning climb the hill click some pics and see the, cover the distance so there is a you lake and there is a hill and the, uh, yeah, there, is, there a lake, is a park there is a hill. everything is there sanjay gandhi is not inside the campus sanjay gandhi is like outside of the campus but, but anyway it is just uh, you can uh, take yeah, a bicycle yeah. and you can go there so yeah. you, you go on trekking there yeah people i mean i have also gone on two treks but people generally go on more treks like i have been to two Uh, tricks so you go and do camping and you stay, yeah we did camping you stay overnight there yeah 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 oh, nice. so generally i did a trek on Ma- in mathiran mm-hmm. and another is where i forgot the name i forgot the name yeah so i did i, I participated in two treks yeah so it was like going there camping and staying nice. so it was i mean IIT Bombay organizes. I mean, the, the department doesn't organize, but student body organizes. Student bodies have organized all this kind of trips. Yeah, so it's very good. I mean, life at IIT Bombay is very good. Okay, so you have. Do you have really time to enjoy all these things? Yeah, I you mean, can take out time. Yeah, 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 you can easily. So initially, I mean, uh, be at the beginning of the semester, you generally get free time, and as the semester progresses, yeah. as you as you enter the you know midpoint of the semester, the assignments, the, the, the and time, they, yeah. yeah. So, so what happens half is half of the semester you are going to be free and half of the semester yeah, you are actually going you are not free per se any time completely but what happens is uh, when you go in the first sem 
you are like uh, like uh, like bombarded with so many things i mean it's a different system you are going walking into you have never walked in that system with so many course projects so many assignments especially this must be the first deadlines. time you are living outside your home right uh, or yeah. did you do live no, in a hostel no i lived i lived yeah. during a so you are used to a hostel yeah. environment i mean the hostel environment is okay i mean it's very warm okay. in that sense but actually the course work is so heavy at least in the first sem mm-hmm. I mean, especially because you are changing the system i mean you will feel lot of like things will be lot of overwhelming for you Now, but with second sem i think so your uh, your mind adjusts to that the kind of pressure you are getting so you get a lot of time to do stuffs now great fine so in the first year of your mtech you are supposed to do eight courses or seven courses and you are done with them mm-hmm. and in the second year at the beginning of the second year you should be choosing a project to work on is it or is it in the uh, final no, semester actually uh, actually in the second semester itself Okay. Uh, there is a paper called a seminar. Like there is a subject called a seminar. Seminar okay. where you will be assigned to a guide. Okay. Who will give you papers to read on. The basic purpose of seminar is to motivate your problem statements towards the master's thesis. Like okay. what is the core problem statement you want to work on? And so you mean to say that in the second semester itself, you are supposed to come up with a project that you wish to work on in the second year. Yeah. So in the first year, second semester, you should fix it. I mean, not tentatively. Not the, not the project per se, but the area. At, at least area. At least area be. and the professor. Okay. And professor, uh, do you choose them or are they randomly being no, they assigned? No, they are not randomly assigned. It's a kind of preference system. Like uh, what happens is uh, there are many courses. Okay. So many professors has their own requirements. Few only accept like marks in courses. Mm-hmm. Few wow. may give out papers to you to read them and summarize them. Okay. So and depending on them, your work, there. Yeah, depending on how you have summarized them, and few also may take interviews. Okay. So that depends from professor to professor. So what you mean to say is, uh, you approach a professor saying that you want to work with him in this area, and he is going to either look at your marks you have got in his subject, where you have. So you are supposed to take a subject which he taught. No, not he taught. I mean, which is related to the f- which is related to that field. And the other thing is, uh, I mean, generally the professor will say like, "Have you taken this subject? What is the marks on in this subject?" So they are going to see your marks in the subject. Yeah. And sometimes they will ask some questions about the research papers which they give you to read. Yeah. And then they decide. And then so it is like you go and approach the professor, and depending on his availability, depending on his uh, on no, his like, he also may have few quotas, right? Yeah. I mean, so he, he must be having projects. PhD students already. Yeah. So he may have three projects where he has a mindset of taking not more than five people. Okay. So. generally depending on his time available time yeah. he is going to limit that limit he is going to take five five students this year and uh, dip, if the ten students approach he is going to uh, take them five. Uh, yeah select five of yeah. them based on the marks mostly based on the marks i mean not mostly based on the marks i think the first filtering criteria is marks after that they give out some task some yeah. task yeah. and you are supposed to read the papers and you are supposed yeah. to give him a presentation and uh, or interviews inter- and he is going to interview and he is going to take you yeah. uh, fine now the main thing is uh, there are going to be btech students mm-hmm. and the mtech students in iit bombay mm. and uh, how is the faculty or the professor to student ratio in iit bombay are are they able to uh, spend enough time on you on your project guiding you or is it like you have to fight for it i mean uh, most of the professors are able to give you an hourly i mean a weekly slot okay weekly one so weekly day. one hour one and a half hour i mean that's the i mean if you have some interesting results or if you want to discuss then definitely you can approach the professor and talk to them like i mean they Will are they available, be available for they are available decision. like they i mean they might not be available when you are available but one or two mails does the job how is the competition between btech students and mtech students there in will they be taking up more time and more resources in the no, lab no 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 that doesn't happen i mean so the, they are equally the, i mean it's it's very it's the 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 situation is very healthy out there okay. and for the placements very, also is, is it the placements i i think so there is a misconception among people that iit any mtech people get less scopes so other than uh, like i was a department placement coordinator from my batch so i felt like uh, and anyone will feel, uh, agree with me that uh, the scopes are rather equal when okay. i say like other than the their core consultancy firms 
no one like uh, the core consultancy firms are the only ones who prefer B Tech. Okay. And anyways, people people who have done M Tech are not interested Generally, in banking sector. Uh, yeah, I mean banking sectors or maybe consultancy. Yeah. Okay. So they prefer B Tech students, but anyways, M Tech do not want to go there. So in this so year, so the core computer science uh, companies. Yeah, the core computer science or core technology companies are. I mean, they are well coming to both of them, both okay. of BTECs or MTECs. So, so they treat both of them equally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I have like um, many. Com- I mean, they, I don't, I don't know if there is a, even one company who didn't open for uh, masters. Masters. I mean, being a CSE firm. So all the companies are. Yeah. I mean, we have people from MTEC who have been to in Google India. Okay. Who have gone to Microsoft Redmond. Okay. Who have gone to Tower Research Capital. Gone to Goldman Sachs, wow. Samsung, and. Microsoft so the packages so. are around 25 to 40 lakhs th- that range uh, yeah India. it it i mean i mean we cannot disclose the packages as such but okay. it's, it's decent so it's yeah decent. So and, they, it, and it's the best you can get in india okay fine so you can't disclose it but i can disclose yeah, it. You can. <laughs> so 25 to 40 lakhs is what you can expect for jobs in india and uh, for jobs abroad generally uh, it will be much higher it will be in crores but anyway when you convert it um, that is the dollar rate right dollar rate yeah. yeah so it will be 50 times more than what you get here so that is about the jobs and uh, coming to your project uh, which area did you get into and um, my project was about uh, my project to be specific the my problem statement is about counting people from images from still images and it involves so it like, image processing uh, yeah, it's computer vision. Okay. So it's not image processing as such, it's computer vision and we applied, I mean, we approached this problem from machine learning perspective view. So deep learning techniques. Yeah, and deep learning is coming everywhere, wherever there is machine learning. Okay. Um, so are you able to publish any paper or you are uh, going to Till do now I do not have any publications, but I am very hopeful to uh, have it published in the next one month or so. Okay. So, do you have any plans of uh, doing a PhD, continuing your research and your research work there, or do you want to take some break and uh, make some money and then get back? I mean, I, I obviously love the problem statements, and there is a host of works that are going on like this is very good, not only on machine learning. Specifically, specifically, if you are interested in machine learning in IIT Bombay, so the department has a lot of variety. Let's say people are working on vision, on speech, in NLP, in information extraction. In reinforcement learning okay. so the the problem statements are also very good that they, they, they are working on uh, but what happened is research PhD is more about commitment I mean you need to know that yeah you are ready to give four or five years of your life for that work getting done. So I as think of it is now, going to take even more than five years these days yeah it might I mean four is the best case scenario if you are going to work with the same same guide from your masters it might take less time but yeah if you go to a new guide i mean new if guide. the problem statement switches then obviously there will be a lot of problem i have even seen people who are working from nine nine years yeah ten there, years are, there are instances but yeah. these days it is going to be but overall it reduces to like uh, what is your dedication to the thing how much so right now you don't have it in right mind. now no the mindset is not that you were just so at least a, one, a year break have fun for some time yeah. and then maybe. a year break yeah so anyway you had fun in your variety bombay also, yeah right <laughs> i had fun I mean, it is not like you did not so now now the question is uh, uh, so knowing all that uh, you have known now so if if you have to take the decision again so would you again go to iit bombay instead of iic yeah. or is, you you still don't know I mean, I would definitely go to IIT Bombay again. Again, okay. again, yeah. In <laughs> fact, I just wish that the master's course would have been for three years. Oh, okay. I mean, it's so it's, you loved the life there so much. Yeah, loved the life, and there is so much learning experience. Okay, and that is the main reason. So, I mean, obviously, I, I mean, IIC is as good as IITB or that. But no, that I is a question that I'm getting so frequently. Okay. So that I, so I, would, I would love to be in IIT Bombay again. Okay. as a student so so anyway uh, coming to jobs there is no much difficult i mean both are same and uh, yeah, people I mean, generally say that it is life is much easier in I, iit bombay compared to iasc so yeah regarding placements there is also one thing that you do not need to much worry about like 40 to 50 percent of the btech csc people are already placed okay so your competition is only with the remaining 50 percent i mean 50 percent already get a ppo okay so and and I have seen like people in like my senior batch in our batch. I mean they have performed. Uh, I mean most of the cases they have performed equally good as the BTEC counterparts. Okay. So that is not a very big problem. I mean it's a common thing that 
Yeah, so you need IIT Bombay. I you think must get place, into yeah. either IIT Bombay or IIT. Uh, yeah, yeah. There Any is no need to. Matter. There is no need to worry for placements. What you should be focus on is your project. Yeah, and that is very important. Because you don't get a chance to work on. You don't get a chance to work on research problems. Research so problems close. again, again in your yeah. life. Mm-hmm. This this might be your last opportunity to work on. Yeah, yeah. Once you get into your job, you might never come. Never out of come it. across research problems. So yeah. that is the only thing you should be focused on. That is what is said. Okay. So even when you have got this uh, rank in gate, you even had an opportunity to get into a PSU, but you didn't apply for it. But still, why didn't you apply for a PSU? And uh, what is your suggestion? So many people are asking me whether. whether uh, you know they should be going for a psu they are also paying uh, handsome money yeah. so now should they be going for a psu or uh, doing a masters which one do you think and why just suggest them yeah so basically like i didn't have much inclination towards psu after my gate rank okay so anyone i think so you can go for a job any time in your life if you have a decent gate rank uh, you can go for psu even after 2 years but what the experience of doing a masters from iit or any other top tier colleges will give you i mean that is something you should have throughout your life that is a moment you can cherish okay. so definitely i mean give it a try i've seen people coming from psus to complete their uh, masters yes. and then maybe they can they will go back to the same psu they were working on and that is the thing i mean just study for 2 hours just learn new things and then you can any time apply to psus right So what you mean to say is, um, doing a master's is preferable compared to uh, doing a job at an early stage, because you'll yeah. be learning more, and uh, this I mean, opportunity you don't get later. I mean, and yeah, and I mean your learning curve will only increase, right? It won't decrease. So if you're getting a PSU now, you will get. So any time it is better to get into a college than to get into yeah. a job. That is what you mean. I mean your skill sets will improve drastically. So now, uh, how happy are your parents? So I had spoken to them in two thousand seventeen, and they were very happy then. So seeing that you are getting into some good yeah. college, now that you have got a very good job with a very good package, so what? How happy are your parents now? I mean, so what was what was the reaction when you just called them up to tell tell them that okay, I got placed in this company with this salary? Yeah. So like, my parents have never been that expressive about it. Okay. Like from. I mean, but I can I can read it in their eyes. Like you can, I mean, when you are close to a person, you can understand that yeah, they appreciate it. So they were happy when I cracked the gate uh, gate exam and like I got into IIT Bombay. And they were also very happy like when I got my job. But ultimately, like it, it's a kind of first job that I've got jobs before that, but it's a kind of my first job. But this is a I'm big, this is a big yeah, thing this compared big to thing. what you have got earlier. This yeah, so this is a big thing. They account. were they were oh, happy fine. and. it's not only the salary part which they were happy with they were very happy with the profile part of it like since uh, so your I'm profile going, is a research engineer yeah, right since i'm going inside as a research engineer so the problems we will be working on i hope will be much challenging yeah and that thing like made my parents more happy okay so so what are you going to do with your first salary then okay uh, if i i mean when i get my first salary first uh, i like to clear all my dues that i have with friends <laughs> and then i would like to give something to my mom and dad okay and to my friends obviously like and obviously i have a lot of pending party lists i mean i get messages from here and there like uh, you have your party dues from 2 years back so, yeah, so like what am get, i going to get <laughs> what you are going to get a watch or a book you ah. love a book okay great you love books right? so <laughs> thank you yeah. so much So those who are preparing for get generally they get demotivated and uh, you know some sometimes they just stop preparing they generally give up. So I see that most of the people who are not able to get into this you know good institutes they mainly the main reason is they give up in the middle because they got they get demotivated right. So how did you cope up with this? How did you motivate yourself continuously throughout the preparation and how are you able to put in? uh that 4 to 5 hours every day till the end so were there any times where you got uh, demoralized or demotivated and again you had to do something to get back yeah so uh, there were times like i got demotivated but not to a very great extent but like uh, things will constantly try to demotivate you let's say getting low marks in one of the tests i mean that happened with me okay i mean Uh, that's for several reasons that happened with me like i got less scores maybe i was not giving attention enough 
to the exam on maybe and sometimes the test series were very tough so yeah, we intentionally are... make it uh, tougher compared to the main gate exam yeah so that that may always happen that can happen with anyone hmm. so it's very important to understand that this is a phase and this will eventually pass so this but happens to everyone this happens to everyone this has happened to even many people i have talked to uh, and the thing is uh, you shouldn't force yourself or stress out yourself too much i mean the the most important thing is take a break hmm. like for me what worked is i just went to meet my friends okay i just uh, i mean for many cases also i binged to watch let's say tv series and any kind of genre which works for you we will do and uh, in amidst this thing happening it is very important that you have a set of good friends i mean set of good friends not it's not necessary that they are from very good colleges or whatever but those set of friends should understand you i mean they can also be your parent so when you can talk to the i had few of them like i was lucky enough to have few friends i mean even one or two of them will do so talk to them talking to them helps you makes you feel good so they encourage you to they encourage you that they will constantly say that i mean when when you get to hear it from someone you know mm. and they can assure you that yes you can do good so okay. that will constantly help so don't get demotivated although there will be phases where you will feel a lack of drag and you will feel a lot of stressed out it's okay it happens to everyone take a break come back stronger so what i mean to say is everyone there see there is no one who has never uh, failed a test in t- when you are taking the test series so we intentionally make the test series very difficult compared to the gate exam so that you will able to uh, learn the time management uh, well and also you will be able to grasp some few more uh, topics in the test series so don't get demoralized by looking at your marks in the test series it is okay it is natural and everyone has the same problem right even he got his you know 15th rank in uh, gate and still he was not able to perform well in our test series so that is okay so take it take it for granted that you are going you are not going to do well in all the tests but that should not hamper your preparation okay yeah, and this, and at the same time if you are not scoring low you shouldn't leave it all together like okay. i mean that shouldn't i mean that that can obviously stress you out but you should work like initial phases i wouldn't get good marks uh, because of the numerical answers okay. i mean i used to do a lot of mistakes and that can lead to a lot of frustration because you know what to do but you are not getting the answers right and for that you can lose 12 or 13 marks i used to lose 8 or 9 marks okay so that can be a lot of deterrent for your preparation so work on it and by and by like i have improved a lot like if you if i if i remember correctly and i do like i i got zero negative marks okay. i didn't have any negative marks in my paper like every numerical part was right so finally he was able to reach to a point where he got no negative marks at all so in the initial phases you will not be able to do well but gradually you will get in, you know you will improve yourself and at finally gate paper will be easy okay so don't worry about it just have that positive mind- mindset that gate paper is going to be easy and even if it is not uh, very easy also don't you you will not do mistakes and you will not get negative marks okay so we have uh, mostly covered all the questions that were asked so in, now if you still have any more questions so uh, himadri will be available on our forum to discuss about this you can visit my website ravindrababuraola.com so we have a forum where you could discuss your doubts you can write your question there and himadri will be able to answer all your question right so either it is a general question or anything related to jobs or uh, anything related to um you know iit bombay you will be able to answer it there okay fine